Hi, I'm Graham McFarland. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Alabama at Birmingham in the Division of uh, Vascular Surgery and Endovascular Therapy, and I'm here to talk to you today about peripheral arterial disease, particularly what it is and what can be done about it. So PAD uh, typically refers to blockages in the arms and legs. Uh, symptoms of PAD uh, can be no symptoms at all, um, or exertional muscle pain uh, referred to as claudication within the legs. Uh, and then more severe states can uh, have rest pain, uh, where you have pain typically in your foot uh, with, with just rest and no activity at all, or even tissue loss of the lower leg. Uh, chronic limb-threatening ischemia is really the end stage of peripheral arterial disease, and that refers specifically to, the, uh, to those patients with ischemic rest pain or tissue loss, as I mentioned. PAD is a relatively um, uh, prevalent uh, disease within the U.S. population. You can see that uh, the older uh, you are, the more likely you are to have um, uh, this disease. And the patients over the uh, age of 80, up to 30 percent of people within the U.S. population have uh, a diagnosis of PAD. Risk factors for developing PAD are listed here. So patients that smoke, diabetics, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, um, chronic kidney disease, again, as we mentioned, uh, uh, older age, obesity, and the sedentary lifestyle are all risk factors for developing uh, peripheral arterial disease. I highlight smoking and diabetes because, as, as you can see here, uh, those that have diabetes or those that smoke or have three to four times the risk of developing uh, peripheral arterial disease as compared to the general population. The natural history of this disease uh, is, is relatively dormant in most people. Um, uh, the vast majority of patients that have a diagnosis of peripheral arterial disease will have stable symptoms uh, at five years. However, a small portion uh, of those patients will progress to the chronic limb-threatening ischemia I mentioned. And the important uh, thing to mention there is that once you do progress to a chronic limb-threatening ischemia diagnosis, your risk of amputation goes very, very high compared to those patients with just uh, standard peripheral arterial disease. Uh, as shown here, you can see the five-year amputation rate is well below 10 percent in patients with just standard claudication, and then that, ex that approaches 50 percent at five years in those patients with uh, the chronic limb-threatening uh, ischemia diagnosis. When you see a, a physician uh, about your uh, disease, a lot of times they'll ask you questions about where your pain is, and that really uh, uh, plays a huge part in kind of determining where uh, the majority of your disease is likely located. Patients that have aortoiliac occlusive disease or disease within the arteries of the belly will oftentimes complain of hip and buttock pain with walking. Patients that have femoral popliteal disease or the uh, disease within the arteries of the thigh will often complain of uh, claudication or pain in the calf with ambulation. Uh, patients with isolated uh, disease within one segment of the arterial tree uh, will, will, will be the ones that complain of claudication, whereas those that develop severe two-segment disease uh, for instance, in the aortoiliac segment or the femoral popliteal segment will be the ones at high risk for developing the chronic limb-threatening ischemia. Diagnosis is typically made initially with non-invasive studies, so ultrasound studies as shown there on the right, or uh, the blood pressure cuffs uh, around the ankles and the toes as shown there on the left can ultimately, can ultimately be used to compare the blood pressure in your legs to the blood pressure in your arms that can tell us if there's blockages along the way. More uh, involved studies, including a CT angiography, uh, which is shown there on the left, uh, or uh, an angiogram uh, shown on the right, can give us more specific anatomical detail as to where uh, your disease may be located. When treating uh, patients with claudication and peripheral arterial disease, really the most important first step to make is appropriate medical therapy and lifestyle changes. Smoking cessation is really the most important thing you can do uh, if you smoke and you have peripheral arterial disease to kind of halt the progression of the disease. Supervised exercise programs with walking regimens are very important and can ultimately improve your symptoms, um, if not resolve them uh, altogether. Um, Antiplatelet therapy with aspirin or clopidogrel and then ultimately statin therapy have shown to both be very beneficial uh, for um, halting the progression and treating uh, this disease from a medical standpoint. Surgical therapy uh, with endovascular measures or minimally invasive approaches um, with wires and catheters uh, can be used or ultimately open reconstruction with bypass surgery may be needed. Examples of uh, endovascular therapies or minimally invasive therapies often involve getting access in the groin or the arm into, uh, into an artery and then advancing down with a wire to get across a stenosis in your vessel and then ultimately balloons and stents can be used to open this vessel up. Uh, and improve the blood flow uh, to the limb as shown here. 
And then, uh, as I mentioned, lower leg bypass uh, by taking uh, what we prefer. Well, we prefer to use a segment of your vein. Sometimes prosthetic bypass can be used to um, improve blood flow around a blockage uh, within your leg uh, or your arm. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, endovascular measures uh, in the bigger vessels with the iliac or aortic treatments with angioplasty or stenting can be used. Uh, or again, bypass uh, can also be applied to this area of the body. Uh, with what's shown here is an aortofemoral bypass where we take a bypass from your aorta down to the arteries in your groin to ultimately bypass an occluded vessel. So it's recommended uh, that if you have pain in your legs with walking, uh, it would particularly develop at a certain distance each time and improve with rest. Uh, you should seek treatment, uh, especially if you have pain in your feet or lower legs at rest, or if you have any non-healing wounds in your feet or legs, it is essential that you be seen um, as soon as possible. At UAB, we've recently developed the UAB Advanced Limb Preservation uh, Program, which is a collaborative effort amongst many specialties here that are involved in uh, treating um, uh, this complex patient population. Uh, that uh, we're accepting patients and can ultimately uh, provide you um, with the most advanced therapies uh, that are out there to ultimately help you uh, improve your uh, symptoms and attempt to save your leg if possible. And then what you can do in the meantime, uh, stop smoking. Uh, again, is probably the most important thing you can do. Effective diabetic and blood pressure management are essential. And then seeing your primary care physician about potentially starting aspirin and uh, statin medication if appropriate um, can, help, can help you in the long run. And then, and then at the end of the day, walking and exercising uh, are vital um, in um, uh, treating uh, this disease. Thank you for your attention.